Well, hi again. Welcome back to Rob's Feed. Today, this is episode number 71. And here in my We Fix Your News the Way We Like It shirt, I'm Rob Shendo. Thank you for downloading and thank you for watching. Last time I spoke to you, I was so pleased and we were all so happy. I even said, I said, by the time you probably watch this episode, same-sex couples in California would probably be getting married. Well, as that picture shows, that didn't quite happen that way. And had I gotten on the camera, in front of the camera, immediately after that, I would have been so enraged. I would have been screaming, throwing things, which is what I actually did just off camera because I was very upset, but I may have been wrong. So here's what happened, you know, a week or so or 10 days ago, Judge Von Walker handed down his decision, which ruled that Proposition 8, the proposition voted by 7 million, how many people in California, banning same-sex marriage, he declared that unconstitutional. And we talked about that, the whole world cheered and everything was f fabulous. But he imposed uh, what's called a stay on his decision, meaning that they couldn't implement it right away, people couldn't get married right away, they had to give it a rest for a, set, for a bit to uh, allow for appeals and whatever else, whatever the legal stuff is. So marriages would be postponed until the end of that stay or until it had been lifted. And then... Um, the other day, <laughs> he did indeed lift that stay, and everybody cheered because we could now go run down and get a marriage license. And uh, the local uh, clerk's offices and things throughout California were all prepared for that to happen. And then bright and early Thursday morning, gay couples could get married. I think it was Thursday. Well, a higher-up court in the... Uh, it's a, they have, the Ninth Circuit, I believe it is, said, no, the stay stays in effect. Well, this isn't so, it's, it was just devastating. It really upset so many people, myself included. But if you think about it, what the Ninth Court, Circuit Court of Appeals did was they, they instilled some urgency to it. Because they knew all these people, men and women alike, were all getting ready to get married. This is going to accelerate that process. And why is that important? Accelerate the process of the appeals, rather. And why is that important? Because if it had gone into effect, there really wouldn't have been that urgency. And lo and behold, we passed January, going to February, going to March. Well, you know what? There's going to be a new governor, a new attorney general in California at that time. The current attorney general, Jerry Brown, the current governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, they were fine with it. They had no intention of supporting, prosecuting, or whatever the legal jargon is, that, that proposition. But who knows who's going to be elected? And if it's a Republican by the name of Meg Whitman, she... I, I th I, she could very well pursue the appeals and have it all end right there. This way, by the time she, assuming she is elected, which I hope not, by the time she's in office, this will all be done. And hopefully, to our advantage. But, got, but at least we know that who the current governor and the current attorney general, they're not going to fuck with it. So that's why I think it's probably a good thing, this uh, decision by the Ninth, Court, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. God, it's always hard for me to say things like that. Target. I was just looking at the, well, I put my money information into Quicken. And, uh, and what got, from this household, what got spent on groceries in the last couple weeks since the Target boycott? 
You might recall, I actually went into Target one day to get all the rain, and I bought a gallon of milk while I was there. Well, the other grocery receipts that either came from here in Chicago, we have Jewel and we have Dominic's, from either of those two places or both, actually. I spent around $200. That would have been spent, or a good hunk of it would have been spent at Target in their grocery department. But I just can't bring myself to do it. If you look on Facebook, 250,000 members have signed up to uh, boycott or like the pay the boycott Target page. And I took, just took the calculator out and I, ass assuming they all would have spent the same $200 that I would have spent at Target, that comes to $50 million. So assuming that, all those things, Target's out $50 million because of their shenanigans. And now they won't, they won't, they will not make good by giving an equivalent amount of money to gay causes or gay candidates. No, no. They walked away from the negotiations with the HRC, the Human Rights Coalition. Fifty million dollars, Target. Get your asses or, or fire. Get Greg Steinhoffel, who's your chief executive officer. And then it's also come to light that he and his wife have given ten thousand dollars to Michelle Bachman of all the witches, ignorant witches in Congress. She's like the queen. This has got to stop. Target, come on. We've got to get to their board of directors. Maybe get to their suppliers. I was thinking about that. I was thinking of writing a letter to everybody. I look at the Target fire from every Sunday's paper. I look at it online and I go page after page after page. And whenever I see a name brand item, I was thinking I should write that um, company's, so hypothetically say it's Scott Towels or something. And I say, dear Scott, I really like your product. Would want it want to continue buying it but I see you're in bed with Target and they support such hatred thing, hateful things I no longer will buy your, your product anywhere just thought I was also pleased to see that um, you know when, when Target or any corporation builds a new big store or building or anything they have to get the approval of the local government before they can, can do it and uh, there's some sort of move in San Francisco against any expansion by Target because of this. Of course, San Francisco, we have to love the way they operate. It's a very gay-friendly area. And I, I guess the Target does have plans submitted for the, uh, the Board of Supervisors, they call it there, to uh, approve. And uh, maybe it might not get it there. So I was thinking we should go to all the cities everywhere and, and get their uh, individual supervisors or their aldermen or whatever to sign a pledge that they will not support Target's expansions in their area. Another thought. But as I said, you know, for me, it is really rough. Less than a month ago, Target opened this big, beautiful, grand store walking distance from where I am right this second and I went there, and I was just in love with it, and I told you all about it and how wonderful it was. That was just before the news came out about these political contributions. And I'm just, I'm still sick about it. I picked out things that I want. For example, I have the scheme to get a couple tables, so set up a, the computer monitors and everything. They, the, what I assume to be the perfect little tables there to I, I haven't gotten them because I want to pay cash for them. So as the cash comes in, then that's when I'll buy them. But now I, I can't. And if I want to get anything comparable elsewhere, it'll literally cost me twice as much money. But I, and, and these groceries, I said I spent $200 elsewhere. I, 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 off the top of my head, I kind of think I might have spent about maybe 140 if I'd been able to buy all those items at Target. That's the difference. That's the sacrifice that I personally am making for it. And I hope you're doing something similar. On a uh, lighter note, I want to mention that I've got some nice plans for this week. Weekend, actually starting tonight. Today's Thursday. Today's Thursday, the, uh, what is the 19th of August. I have already told you how much I like theater. And this is rare. This is, doesn't happen very often. But in 
Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. In the four days, I will have seen two plays done by two very good professional nonprofit theater corporate companies right here in Chicago. One being the Ballywick Theater, the other being the Red Twist Theater. The Red Twist Theater is a, like across the street from where I frequently do my banking, and I, I just so stu- feel so stupid that uh, I wasn't until yesterday. This play's play been there a mo- over a month, a month and a half, and only yesterday, when I was at the bank and left, and I happened to glance across the street, did I notice that they're performing a play I really like, a very serious drama by um, Peter Schaefer called Equus. And I will be in the audience tonight. Those pictures, those tickets are already paid for and confirmed. My reservation's confirmed. Sunday night, Ballywick Theater, at their facility at, called Stage 773, used to be the theater building, 1255 West Belmont, here in Chicago. They're doing a play, I don't know a whole lot about it, except that it's been recommended to me, called Fucking Men. So, but that, what I'm thinking is, it's very unusual for me to see that much theater in that short a time. Um, and it occurred to me there's six degrees of separation. Each of them has male nudity in it. I look forward to being able to tell you about it um, after Sunday. Once again, I'd like to ask you, please, for the favor of helping me out financially if to get this equipment that I need, make this podcast even better. Please go to robsfeedtoday.com. Uh, about halfway down in the right column, there's this Make a Donation PayPal button, if you would. Click there and send off the pay, uh, donation. I would be grateful, and I'll even shout out hello to you on here on, on screen. The other thing, if you subscribe in iTunes, uh, please do subscribe in iTunes. And uh, once there, go to, go to the page that describes this podcast. Click subscribe, then rate and comment on it. The more rates and comments, the higher up the beta our exposure is, the more people know about us. That would be great if you could do that for me. I downloaded my last episode, that was episode 70, and um, I noticed that there was a, quite a bit of difference between playing the file on my computer and how the file appeared once downloaded. And I attribute that to um, the poor internet service that I'm currently getting. I, I, they've got a work ticket on it. They're supposedly working on it. I need to give them a call and see and get an update on that because it did seem to be destroying or at least deteriorating part of the image. So please bear with me on that. I apologize for that. Uh, hopefully that won't happen very, for very much longer. Again, I want to thank you for downloading, though. Thanks for watching. And now that's all I'm going to say.